Welcome to life's checkmark. Now is the time more than ever to check in. Don't, want, don't let someone else check off your life. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Glenn Daniels II. Uh, he's a very special guest. He's an author, speaker on leadership skills for you and your organization. He has helped uh, well-known or organizations like Disney and Walmart. Just to name a few. There's a whole bunch at his website. You can go there and check it out later. And I got the pleasure of meeting Glenn probably a few months, uh, probably six months ago almost now, and mm -hmm. got to know him a little bit better as a person and what he's been doing. Uh, so it's been really good to have connected with somebody like himself. And so, Glenn, if you could just please share a little bit about yourself and you know what you do more, more in depth than what I just what I just said. Okay. Well, John, thanks very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. It's a good chance for us to uh, share knowledge with everyone. And that's kind of what I do. I try to help people, leadership, become better at leading. I think it's so important that we have leaders who can make a difference. Because after all, we spend all of our days inside the work. I mean, a majority of our life is at work. And if you have leaders who can make that productive and happy and be responsible and accountable, that makes a world of difference not just in that job, but it makes a difference when that employee goes home. You know, it makes a difference to the community, it makes a difference to the state, to the company. It makes a difference, period. So I focus on bringing in leadership material, leadership learning from other people, from books and things. I try to write books that help leaders be better. So we want to just present leadership skills and techniques to as many people as possible that are in the leadership role or sometimes who want to be in the leadership role. Uh, this will allow you to really be better than what you have been as a leader and create a better team. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> That's a nutshell, huh? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so do you feel like now is a desperate time more than ever that we need more leaders? I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily more leaders. I think our leaders have to be better. Okay. You know, we have to have leaders who can think for themselves and separate themselves who understand, okay, that's where I need to be at. That's where I need to lead to. I need to have a vision that people want to follow. I think the way we're structured here is so much of a hierarchy kind of situation. We have leaders all over the place, but they're at different levels of leadership. You know, we have someone at the very lowest level who just are leaders because they have the title. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be the lowest level of leader. Hey, I'm a supervisor now, I'm a manager, I'm the senior vice president of the company, you follow me. Why? Because you have the title. We have a lot of leaders that way. So we need to upgrade that game to where they have this ideal that, hey, here's my vision. I'm sharing my vision. And the people who are following them want to be part of that vision. That's what I think we need more of is people who have a great vision of where they want their company to go to, where they want their team to go to, how they want their life to go to. In other words, how do they want to be? Gotcha. And so what would you do to try to help these people become better leaders? Skills and techniques. That's what we need to present. Skills and techniques. Motivation is great. You know, a long time ago when I first got involved after college with this motivational speaking, I worked for a gentleman who's pure, great. He teaches some great skills, but it's, he's known for his motivation. It's Tony Robbins. He's known for his motivation. You can get motivated. You can get psyched up and you be on fire for two or three weeks. But somewhere along that line, the motivation starts to fade away. Mm -hmm. And as it fades away, you turn around and look back and say, well, what did I really learn? Well, I learned how to pump myself up, so I need to do something different. Well, I want to make sure I bring you skills and techniques so that you can say, okay, you know what? I have a difficult conversation coming with this person. Let me use this skill. Let me apply this technique to him. Oh, that's their behavior here, a different type of person. Here's a technique to deal with that type of person. So we want to bring skills and techniques so that you, when you walk out of a workshop, and this is why I'm able to give a 100% guarantee on my workshop, because when you walk out of the workshop, you have skills and you have techniques. And now it's up to you to get a little bit of motivation to use those skills and techniques. Okay. Okay. And then you mentioned about being pumped up and then like it fades away. So how would somebody try to stay in that area of being pumped up and, and staying focused? It's a natural progression kind of because once you get a little bit pumped up and you have the skills and techniques you're at a level now so even if you sit back and relax a little bit you're at a higher level than what you were before mm -hmm. 
So your level is going to go up, and then therefore you get a little bit more motivation, a little bit uh, stronger throughout the workday. You find skills and techniques to have a high, powerful attitude. And then you get to that higher, powerful attitude, and because you're there, your skills and techniques rise to that, and you're at that level. So I always kind of like that analogy where some people say, okay, you can't solve a, uh, a problem at your current level. So if you have a level two problem and, you have a, and you're have and you at level two, you're not going to get that problem solved until you go to level three. Yeah. You can get to level three with skills and techniques. And so that's what I'd like to try to bring to the table. You can always, I can get you pumped up. I used to teach people how to walk on fire. Fire walking <laughs> is one of those things I used to do. You know, I can get you pumped up. That's not, a, that's not the issue. The issue is kind of give you the skills and techniques and give you the motivation to use those skills and techniques because you're going to reach a level and then you can say, well, let me go a little bit better. Let me try to be a little bit better than what I was yesterday. And that's how that's going to flow for you. Yeah. Okay. Great. And so I had the, the opportunity to explore your website a little bit. And I did see that uh, you do have a great video from TED Talk. And you go ahead and you start saying something about how smart goals aren't smart. Something along those lines, you kind of shared a little bit. Would you mind just sharing a, a little bit about that? You don't have to go too far in depth, but. Yeah. So, so far I've written two books on goal setting. The first one is the science of goal setting. That one, I was fortunate it was nominated for the Pulitzer, but the second one is where the TED talk came from. Why smart goal setting is dumb. Okay. Why smart goal setting is dumb. You have to be careful here with me, John, because this is one of those subjects where <laughs> I can get the rolling on. Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Five hours on this one easily. Oh uh, yeah. Well, we won't last. We won't do that. <laughs> but, the premise behind that is, and it's the truth behind that is, when you're setting smart goals, what you're doing is setting safe goals. Mm -hmm. You set up a smart goal, a very specific goal. There's maybe something not quite bad about that, except for most of the time when we set up a specific goal, we don't set up the reason why we want this goal. And now you're talking about motivation. You got If you know the reason why you're doing something, that gives you a little bit more motivation. Mm -hmm. okay? M, measure things, okay? When you look at the other parts of it, measurement and timelines go out the window. So the two critical areas of smart goals that make them dumb is achievable and realistic. If you're trying to set up a goal that's, okay, A stands for achievable, aligned to, agreed with. Okay, so I always ask, who can tell you what, you're, what you can achieve? That, who can tell you what you as achievable for you? Who can say, Hey, John, this is an achievable goal for you. Who can tell you that? It would be me. See, and I would even disagree with that because yeah. I'm betting that you don't know what you are what you can do. You don't know. So for sure, how can anybody else tell you? Because you're not really sure. We all have done something that surpassed what we did before. Mm -hmm. We weren't even sure that we were able to do it. I've heard somebody, you know, I go back to that firework. First time I did that firework, I thought it was the dumbest, silliest thing in the world. I wasn't going to do it because I can burn my feet. It wasn't possible. First time I learned how to do some different magic tricks. Oh, I don't know how they do that, but I learned it because I was able to achieve it. Yeah. Okay. The first time I was able to make the certain level of income, I was well beyond what I ever thought I could. But I was able to achieve that. Okay. I was able to achieve that. So I didn't know what I was achieve could achieve. What I'm saying with achievable, ag agree to it and align to, it's not realistic. No one can tell you. So therefore, the R is out the window now too, right? Realistic, relevant. I can't tell you what's realistic for you. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what's relevant for you. I can't do that. So I have to ask you, if you can't say what's achievable and what's realistic for you, or if you are, aren't you setting a real soft, easy goal? Sure. You're setting a real soft, easy goal. And we do that to help us feel better. Right. So real quickly, um, one of my favorite examples of a dumb goal, when John F. Kennedy stood at Rice University and said, we're going to land a man on the moon and return him safely. Well, the truth of the matter is at the time, that was a very dumb goal we put in the smart goal setting process. We had no idea that we could do it. Mm -hmm. No idea how we could do it. Now you're setting the goals because you already know how to do it. So I don't know how to do this. So I'll set that. That's achievable, realistic goal. We had no idea. Do you know that most of America disagreed with that goal? They didn't see any reason why we should do, be trying to go to the moon. It wasn't relevant to most of America. 
Do you know we didn't have the money to do it at the time? We didn't have the money to do all this. We did it anyway because it was a goal that would improve humankind. Okay. That's what type of goals you should be setting yourself and as a leader of any organization, leader of your team. A goal that's going to serve humankind. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that you should be telling everybody what that goal is. I don't think you should be. Okay. I don't think you should be telling everybody that goal. I think that's a goal that you should have put away. That you know what it is. You look at it every day, but you know what it is. But I'm not saying go tell somebody else that. I will also add this little caveat to it. The smart goal setting process, that is perfect for your accountability partner. Okay, that's where you want that to go for your accountability. Use that for accountability. Mm-hmm. But setting powerful goals, that's not smart goal setting. So that's it in a nutshell. I will throw in, you know, you have to keep, um, I keep on saying nutshell, but it's, <laughs> you have yeah. to throw in the simple fact that you're keeping these goals to yourself for a powerful w- reason. Right. Okay. You need to avoid CNNP. CNNP is the curse of anybody who's trying to get someplace. And when that happens, the CNNP takes over and you have an issue. CNNP, you must avoid constantly negative news and people. Mm-hmm. Negative news and people, avoid them. So therefore, I'm not putting my goals out there for negative people to come back and get you and talk to you about it. Even the people who love you the most, they tend to want to protect you from the fall. Oh, John, that might be a little bit too hard for you to do. You might think about doing something that's a little more realistic. So I'll say one last time, I hope. That's the smart goal setting process in a nutshell. Yes, there's a process to it. But you got to make it, uh, you can't use that to set yeah. worthwhile goals. Gotcha. Yeah. And again, uh, at your website, you can go ahead and watch that video. I think it's like 10 minutes long, but it's definitely worth watching. Um, so I, I have a few quick questions. Uh, that I'll try I, to give you quick answers, but no problem. Uh, you, <laughs> just give me the best answer. That's all I want. Um, so I, as I ask other entrepreneurs when I, I'm going to interview them, uh, what led you to begin entrepreneurship and why? There's a thing uh, by W. Clement Stone called uh, inspirational dissatisfaction. And I absolutely hated working for somebody else. I'll just okay. be honest about it. I did not like working for anybody else. Um, I never caught anybody else's vision. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's true for a lot of folks. I think, you know, we kind of look at working for someone else and we say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. So, did, so what, what caused you to start doing that, start thinking different? I think hmm, that's a good question. I never really thought about what caused that to switch in my heart and my mind. Because, you know, I think when I was young, I was, you know, I had a little lawn business. You know, I was cutting okay. grass at 12, 13, 14 years old. Just something my dad set me up and I was just doing by neighbors. And right. it's giving me like $10 a week. And I was happy with that. The next summer I went up to 12 lawns and the next summer I went up to 17 lawns. Yeah. I had money all year long. I was on my own boss. I just, okay, hey, I'm going to cut lawns on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. And I get them all done on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I just, you know, I'm going to start as early as I want to, stay as late as I need to, because the sun went down, do whatever I have to do so I can get these all these lawns done on Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Mm-hmm. And I had enough power and enough money where I could pinch off and not have to get an allowance. So that's where I first kind of caught that entrepreneur bug, I think, from there. And now that you mentioned that, I'm thinking that's where my thought was, okay, well, I can make as much money by myself as I can with anybody else. Now that I'm starting to build a team behind me, I can make more. I can do well. Yeah. I just have to build and be careful. Yeah. So you grew up into it pretty much. I think, yeah. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about it till you said it, but yeah, that's the case. I mean, when I was that young. That's what I was mm-hmm. doing. Okay. So um, is, is there anything that kind of keeps you going as an entrepreneur? I mean, obviously you never really went looking to get a job. It sounds like, you know, uh, I did right after college. I did decided okay. that uh, I wanted to be because I had one of those joint degrees, and I decided I was going to go ahead and go into the radio world, okay. mass communication, um, and kind of got toyed around with that a little bit. I mean, it was like, okay, all right, you get to come work in this top twenty station, um, uh, top twenty market, 
But then as soon as you were ready to go to a larger station, you would have to leave that market. Mm -hmm. Or as soon as they changed their format, you'd have to leave and go to a different market. So it kind of got you know, moved around a little bit like that. So I didn't really care for that so much. I think, though, the reason why I kind of stay with it, because it's really a good feeling when you see the light in somebody's eyes come on. When someone, you're working in a room, maybe you're, you're giving a keynote address, and you see a few people start really scribbling really heavy and hard and say, oh, yeah, I like that. You can see them, and you see that light come on. And then when you get a chance to follow up, you see that they've made a change, which is making a lasting impact, which is what I like to work for is multi-generational impacts. So when I see that light come on, that charges me to keep on going. Gotcha. That's good. And another question for you. So I'm a believer in goals. As you know, we've been talking for a while and mm -hmm. performing each day towards them. So what is it that you do to get the most important tasks done of the day? You know, I do. Um, I would say something up until the last six weeks or so. Um, something different. My morning ritual now helps drive the rest of the day for me. Okay. When I can get 20 minutes of just pure silence without my mind, you know, that doesn't, you don't get the full 20 minutes because your mind's going to chatter. But the more time I can get where it's just pure silence, if I can get that 20 minute window where I'm doing that, then I try to take another 20 minute window where I'm doing my yoga exercises. Mm -hmm. And then my last 20 minute window is laying out the day, you know, where I put together my top three. I think those three, when I win the morning, make it a huge difference for the rest of the day. Then it becomes really easy after I win the morning to sit down and do what I would have said a few weeks ago, my most productive focus time task. Okay, We refer to it as a jam time or jam session, but it's been a focus time for me where I just do nothing else but that. Yeah, It all stems from having a good morning ritual in the mornings I hit it the day flows and before i know yeah. it it's sunday dinner <laughs> yeah because you had a great time right <laughs> yeah. yeah didn't even uh, think about anything else except for making a difference yeah yeah i have to agree with you with the uh doing the morning routine that de definitely is a game changer yeah yeah and it's amazing how many people people don't know that yeah and it could be what you decide to do whatever you want to do you know what i mean whatever is going to make your day get started and get going uh yeah. Yeah, and just a quick note on that. I think that, mm -hmm. like you said, it has to be what you decide. But I would caution you against setting up a morning ritual that's five hours long, two hours long, you know, <laughs> or has right. 20 steps in it. Yeah. You know, that's why I only have three, because I know I'm going to do those three. And I know the effect of those three. So maybe you do four, maybe you do five. But I would just right. caution people saying, okay, I got to have a morning ritual that runs an hour and a half, two hours long. No, <laughs> no, no, it's usually like 20, 30 minutes, maybe, yeah. you know, and you're getting still four or five things done in that amount of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have here your website and stuff. If you like to mm -hmm. share a little information about it, I'll put it up. Um, there you go. So this is okay. one, this is one of three websites. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I actually want to warn, but <laughs> the way I structure is a little bit different than I explained as we go, but Touchstone Publishers is, my publishing account, my publishing work, we publish and we present workshops. Okay. So when I say we, I have, a, you know, if I say to somebody, hey, I want to learn about the reticular activating system, research that for me. Well, they will research it for me. Okay. And they'll bring me the research, then I'll write about it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, how important marketing is. I could be as great as I want to be, but no one knows about me. So when I say we, that's that. But Touchstone Publisher has, you know, videos that I've made and produced uh, some workshops I've done, um, some webinars for people to take. It has my uh, a lot of my testimonials on there. Uh, I just I've been doing this for so long I can't put all the testimonials on there. And you know this for a while I never even captured testimonials. Okay. And never even thought about doing video testimonies until right before the pandemic shut us down. Um, and then you find you can see just a partial list of some of my clients there, so you'll get a good feel of who I am from that. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> list you already have on there. <laughs> yeah, well, it, well uh, think about how many. Yeah, that's a big so, list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I appreciate that. But yeah, um, so that's what Touchstone Publishers does. So you can you know schedule time with me and things like that. So Touchstone Publishers is kind of the anchor for everything. Okay, and then the next one we have a uh, a leadership. 
leadership test? Okay, so, you know, for example, if everybody's so excited about uh, this emotional intelligence. Okay, so leadership test dot online. So again, leadership test dot online. If you go there right now, you can take an emotional intelligence test. Soon there'll be a test up there for leadership assessment test. And there'll be a test for, you know, we'll start adding more tests in them. But if you go there right now, leadership test dot online, and you want to take emotional intelligence test, put your name, email in, and you'll get the test. Okay. And you'll see what your score is. And say, okay, oh, yeah, that's me. Okay, you'll see where you are. And you say, okay, I need to work a little bit harder here, a little bit softer there. You'll see where that happens. So leadership test dot online is just a place for you to go and take the emotional intelligence test right now. All right, great. Yeah. Thank you. And then uh, we have one more. We got uh, schedulegland.com. Yeah, so the way I get business is I talk to people. So schedulegland.com is just a place for people who want to talk, you mm-hmm. know, who say, hey, you know, I want Glenn to come into my office, but I'm not going to bring in a stranger. Well, let's talk for 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So let's schedule some time. So it's just right there. You just schedulegland.com and you schedule 10, 15 minutes on there. Um, you know, the conversation is usually 10 to 15 minutes. There have been a couple of times where the conversation is stretched out to a couple of hours. Because, you know, this is for you and I to chat. Yeah. Okay. And during this first phone call, what you probably what you never hear from me is what I'm going to sell you. I, that just that approach for leaders means that you didn't catch my vision of what I can do. Mm-hmm. If you don't have my vision, then I can't sell it to you. And I can't give you my vision until you and I get a chance to know each other and I know what you're after and I know whether it can work or not. Now, fortunately for me, I don't need a whole lot of people because we're so well heavy customized. So that maybe maybe that's why that works. But the bottom line is schedulegland.com. You just go there and schedule some time and we talk. Okay. Then we will schedule another meeting if you we're both interested in going forward. We'll schedule another meeting where we figure out exactly what you want me to do. And then we'll figure out another time to say, okay, this is how we're going to do it and structure it. So if you just want to talk, I have people yeah. who get on there who just want to talk about an issue. So um, a couple of days ago, yeah, I think well, it was last week, um, gave out schedule.com, schedulegland.com. And had like five people who want to just ask me more about this uh, goal setting. You know, what do you mean? You know, questions like that. That's what it's all about. Schedulegland.com is just for that conversation. Okay, great. Well, I want to say thank you for joining me and coming on and, you know, having this talk, sharing what you know, and answering the few questions I had for you. Okay. Now, thank I don't know if anybody ever asked you these questions, but do you think we need more leaders in the world right now? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, because <you, laughs> when you said it, it made me thought, think for a second. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll take that one offline and we'll... T- <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> now your audience wants to know what your answer yeah, is. Yeah, so. <laughs> they want. Yeah, I can. I, I can be interviewing for my for myself. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, but that's no, a great question. I, I'll let you know. Okay. But thank you, and uh, you have a great day. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Bye.